Welcome to the Weekly Invite presented by Wall Street Breakfast. I'm Leslie Osmond, and we could use someone to help read the markets. Joining us today is Michael Kramer, creator of Reading the Markets podcast and the founder of Mott Capital Management out of New York. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Hi, thanks for having me. No surprise with the 75 basis point Fed hike, but with the market swings, the S&P 500 closing at new lows this week and the continued strengthening of the U.S. dollar, has inflation peaked and what do you make of interest rates going parabolic over the last year and even more so this past month? Um, so, you know, it's tricky because inflation from the headline standpoint of CPI and the numbers that we sort of uh, typically associate with uh, may have very well peaked. I mean, the question is, obviously, is not if they peak, but how quickly will it take for them to come down? And is the type of inflation we're seeing more on a core level really sticky? And a lot of the metrics out of like the Atlanta Fed and such show that 12 month uh, sticky CPI is actually at its highest level and uh, is done anything but shown any sign of beginning to come down. And, uh, you know, a lot of the what we've seen in, in the interest rate market is really related to a couple of different things. The first thing being that you have the market underpricing where the Fed was ultimately going to go in the it's not so much the 75 basis point rate hike that is driving those rates higher, but it's that dot plot that indicated that the Fed was likely to raise rates to about 4.6% by the end of 2023. And the market wasn't anticipating that type of uh, movement. And so you're seeing the market, especially on the short end of the yield curve, really adjust to it. And I expect that over the next uh, six to 12 months, we're likely to see the two-year yield approach 4.6% and, uh, measures such as a 10 year probably be, to be covering around that four to four and a quarter percent area. So given how everything's playing out and the S&P 500 plunging more than the 80s Volcker moment, is a deep recession inevitable? Um, it certainly seems like it, but I think the problem is uh, that what we need to focus on here is not really real GDP, which a lot of people focus on. We need to focus on nominal GDP. Because even though we've had two consecutive quarters of negative real GDP growth, those negative real GDP readings are driven by a very high GDP price index. Uh, that price index is higher than the nominal rate of growth. And so that's what's giving us that negative real GDP. The problem is, is that that Fed needs to get nominal GDP growth to get towards 0%. Currently, in the second quarter, we printed a almost 8.8% nominal GDP rate of growth. So... Uh, we are likely heading towards a recession. Uh, in fact, I'm actually thinking we may see several negative real GDP print quarters because inflation is so high. And as nominal growth begins to decline, you're likely to see uh, real GDP growth uh, stay negative for some time. So how do investors navigate this environment to preserve capital with equities down over 20 percent and bonds down nearly 15 percent? So in terms of investing, I think the best approach that I've been trying to deploy with my own capital and um, my the, the capital that I manage for uh, clients um, is that what I've been trying to do is be very patient, right? And allow uh, stocks and the market to come to me uh, as opposed to trying to chase them higher like we've seen during these uh, July and August sort of rallies. Uh, and so basically what I'm trying to look at is valuations and trying to find measures and pl places where valuations tend to uh, have bottomed in the past. And on the S&P 500, that's somewhere around 13 to 14 times current year earnings estimates, which is somewhere around 31 to 3,200 right now on the S&P. And so I'm trying to basically, because you're not going to exactly pick the bottom or know exactly when that bottom is going to happen, uh, to deploy capital very slowly into the market, picking a stock every several percentage points that maybe the market comes down as a way of dollar cost averaging in. And so you mentioned the bottom and that you you know put some money on the sidelines. Fears led a lot led to a lot of investors um, leaving a substantial amount of money on the sidelines. And I know you you don't know if the bottom has necessarily been reached, but is now a time then to buy? Uh, I mean. Me personally, I don't think that this is a time, uh, I don't think the bottom has been reached yet. And so given that we're basically just trading at the June lows, I think that uh, we're more likely to see lower levels in the market. And so 
I'm continuing to be patient and waiting for those lower prices to deploy more capital at this point. And in your notes, you mentioned the two-year treasury. Talk to us about treasuries and what are your thoughts on their record surges? So a lot of what we're seeing in the U.S. Treasury market has a direct uh, is being directly impacted also by what we're seeing happening in the U.K. in Germany. You're seeing very high inflation rates in Europe. You know, all these markets are interconnected. So because the British, you know, gilts are trading, you know, are going up in vertical type of uh, form, uh, you're seeing that same sort of price action occurring here because as rates are rising around the world, U.S. rates are not immune and they're being dragged higher as well. And so, for example, when the BOE came in yesterday and intervened, they're, they're launching a new form of QE, uh, at least over the short term, to try to stabilize that market. That's why you saw rates here in the U.S. come down so sharply yesterday. But ultimately, U.S. rates are going to be reflective in terms of where Fed policy goes. And I don't think the Fed is going to be very quick to sort of change policy. In fact, the risk is that if we don't begin to see inflation start coming down and we see the sticky type of inflation, which I'm afraid we're going to have, it's actually more likely that you're going to see those Fed fund targets actually go higher. And speaking of sticky inflation, consumer confidence is low and rising costs are eating away at savings with many people resorting to credit to fund their needs and lifestyle. What are your thoughts on a potential credit crisis or a credit bubble? Um, well, I think after what I've seen happen in uh, the UK over these last couple of days, uh, I think the um, risks have certainly gone higher. Uh, I don't worry so much about a credit crisis on the consumer side of things, because based on a lot of the things I've read uh, and heard, the consumer balance sheet is supposed to be fairly stable and strong. But the other problem that we do have is that you have a lot of, you know, because there's been so much money printing over the years and, and there's been so much fiscal stimulus coming out of many countries, I think the risk is that there's more likely to be some sort of a sovereign issue more than a uh, consumer credit issue. And lastly, are there any particular sectors or industries that you like more than others for investment at this time? So basically what I've been sort of focusing on and looking for investment ideas for myself and for the you know, um, subscribers of my service, we've been communicating about looking for stocks that have uh, you know, very high growth rates so that even if growth does slow, those growth rates will still be either maintained or you know, reduced, but still be higher than the market average. Uh, I'm also focusing on companies that have very high gross margins, operating margins, because again, I want those companies that can uh, have costs that they can manage and that will translate into above average earnings growth. So uh, again, basically here, what matters the most to me is companies that can deliver above average revenue growth, have above average margins and can deliver above average earnings. And that will support a multiple. And do you think anything particular about energy, especially since we've seen that they've reached some pretty peak prices? You know, I gave up trying to predict energy prices uh, the last six months because it's been a, uh, a fool's errand to do. Um, clearly, there are a lot of factors and a lot of events going on around the world that are really sort of driving where oil prices are going and that gas prices are going. So for trying to predict it right now, not in my, uh, my wheelhouse. Thanks so much, Michael, for joining us. You're very welcome. And thanks for having me. You can check out Michael Kramer's work and analysis at Mott Capital Management or his written macro commentary via Seeking Alpha Marketplace. Next, we have Kim Khan to discuss next week's Catalyst Watch. Hi, Kim. Hi, Leslie. Well, here's a question. Does anybody remember the labor market? And with all of the central bank intervention we've been dealt with and bond market craziness, might have forgotten about how important that is to the trajectory of the market. But um, you know, at the time of recording, stocks are really getting hammered after jobless claims came out um, below, below 200K, they've undershot the consensus for 10 consecutive weeks. And next week, we've got the big September non-farm payrolls number. Now, the consensus is for 250K, but I think you're going to see a wide range of expectations there. And it's just a, a big number for the Fed, especially as the J J J Powell seems to have uh, turned to actually wanting to see some erosion of the labor market strength before he really believes that inflation has come under control. And you know, if you keep getting numbers like above 300K, the market's not gonna see that, they're gonna expect more. 
um, uh, more hawkish behavior and risk assets are going to suffer. And uh, also big for the Fed is that they, you know, still are planning on doing quantitative tightening and bond vigilantes like you've seen in the UK are suddenly peeking their heads up and saying, we're not so happy with that. So we've got a new um, Twitter poll coming out for the weekend bite. It's at, uh, at, the, at weekend bite on Twitter. So we're going to ask you, uh, the viewer, if what you think is going to happen in the labor market with the non-farm payrolls report. And it'll be a simple question above 250K, below 250K. And please just come and give us a look and vote in our poll. Exciting news about the new poll. Thanks so much, Kim. Thanks. And we appreciate everyone for watching. Please give us a like or share on social media. And to everyone in our home state of Florida, we wish you well as Hurricane Ian wreaks havoc. Please stay safe and tune in next week.